Let's say you have a system of equations that looks like this, and you want to solve for x, y, and z. Well, one way to do that is with Gaussian elimination. Many of you have probably seen Gaussian elimination before, so this video is not meant to show you how to do it step by step. I'll put a few links in the description, and there's always the algorithm archive if you need more information. Instead, this video is meant to give you a unique visual perspective of the method that I thought was pretty cool when I figured it out. Firstly, the basics. When solving this system, your ultimate goal is to mess around with your equations until you can easily solve for one variable. If the system of equations instead looked like this, you could easily solve for z and then plug z in to solve for y, and then plug both y and z in to solve for x, through a process known as back substitution. Gaussian elimination is the process that allows us to transform one set of equations into another set of equations that is much easier to solve. To do this, we simply take our set of equations and represent it as some sort of matrix. In matrix form, these systems look like this, and the one on the right has a special name, rho echelon form, which basically means all non-zero elements are above the diagonal, creating what looks like an upper triangular matrix. Now, there are some nuances to this argument, but please go to the algorithm archive if you need more information on that. Now, how exactly do we get from the first matrix to the second? Well, we use a combination of three basic rules. One, we can multiply any row by a non-zero constant. Two, we can swap any rows. Or three, we can subtract a multiple of any row from any other row. So in this case, we might start by maybe flipping the first two rows and then subtracting two times the new first row from the second row and three times that new first row from the third row. Now we might subtract 10 times the second row from the third row, and then multiply that second row by negative 1 just to make sure everything's positive. Now we have basically the matrix we were looking for. Oh, and um, sorry for the messy chalkboard. With the matrix in row echelon form, we can easily solve for z, y, and then x with back substitution like we said before. As a note, there are plenty of different ways to do Gaussian elimination and plenty of possible row echelon matrices. The main thing is that the solutions of x, y, and z are all the same. That said, we can actually take this one step further by reducing our matrix such that only the diagonal elements are non-zero by using the exact same rules we used before. In this case, we might start by dividing the third row by 11 and then subtracting two times the third row from the second row. Then we just subtract 3 times the bottom row from the top row and 2 times the middle row from the top row, creating what essentially looks like the identity matrix with fractions on the side. This is called reduced row echelon form and clearly shows that x equals 18 over 11, y equals negative 14 over 11, and z again equals 18 over 11 without any back substitution. Now I want to show you what this looks like in a more visual sense. Each row in our matrix is itself an equation for a plane. So if we plot all three planes together, we find that their point of intersection is the solution we found before, here indicated with a sphere. This is cool, but let's see what happens when we perform Gaussian elimination on our matrix. Basically, the planes wobble about until one of them is parallel to two of the three axes. This stage corresponds to the row echelon form we said before. No matter how we change the planes with Gaussian elimination, the solution remains the same. Now, if we take this one step further to reduced row echelon form, we see that all of the planes align themselves to a pair of axes, but the solution again remains the same. See, the entire process of Gaussian elimination is basically taking a messy set of equations we cannot easily solve and simplifying it so we can. This is even shown in the visual representation, where the set of planes is clearly less complicated after Gaussian elimination, but still shares the same solution. Sure, maybe this visualization is a bit unnecessary, or maybe you've seen it before. I just thought it was kind of cool, and I hope you did too. As always, there's a chapter available for this algorithm, Gaussian elimination, in the algorithm archive, and is currently waiting language-specific implementations. Finally, I want to thank everyone for helping out with the algorithm archive so far. You guys seriously rock. So I just got back from ThinkerCon and it was great, but I'm going to talk about it at a later date. For now, I want to tell you guys about an interesting internship position that is just about to open up here at the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology in my research unit. 
basically we're looking for someone who has experience in programming but really wants to try their hand at high performance computing with graphics processing units. If this sounds interesting to you, we'll be opening up for applications throughout the entire month of December 2018 and there will be more information in the description below. Now, if you have no idea what high performance computing is and you want to learn a little bit about graphical processing units and basically how they work, please feel free to check out my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash simuleos at 5 o'clock a.m. Japanese Standard Time basically every Sunday where we'll be doing a stream on GPU computing specifically. And obviously, if you're interested in what type of research I do and all this kind of stuff, please feel free to ask questions there live where I can answer you directly. That's actually it for now. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.